Come here. I really wish I had a better explanation as to why this front porch had to be built twice, but I don't. If I'd had a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more understanding about framing when I started this, I would have installed a ledger board instead of using the rim joist to hang the front porch off of, which would have given us the angle that would have been needed for the snow to slide off the roof safely. There's your Instagram. Listen. Yeah. This is so much about our life. No, it says his hands look like this. I'm using it to guide him so I can get these out of here. <laughs> I would also mill the beams for the front porch right here at my place and that would also end up coming into play as one of those beams was a little bit too green to be used at that time. But really it would take a couple of winters to understand just in fact what we were dealing with and how best the porch should be built. Once both the front porch was finished, and the back of the house was finished, it didn't take long to figure out that the angles were going to lead to problems with the amount of snow that we get over winter. If we were back home in Arizona, this roof would have been more than sufficient. But after the winter that we just had here at Red Poppy Ranch, all I can say is this porch wouldn't have made it. <laughs> we nailed it! You nailed it! <laughs> here goes all my Tico nails. Tico nails? Sweet, bro. You even wore out the old uh, palm nailer, huh? Sure. Battery's dead? I must say that the look of the corrugated tin was exactly what I was going for, but again, with the amount of snow that we get here, it didn't take long to figure out that this tin was going to cause problems. Once the porch was finished, those first two winters really weren't even that bad. But myself and my son would have to get up on the roof and shovel the snow off fairly frequently. And this was something I didn't want to do. And after two winters, at least one of those beams on the front porch needs to be replaced as well. The upside is if I can take this porch apart carefully, almost all of these materials can be reused at the proper angle with the new front porch. But key word, take it apart carefully, and that's not easy to do. In just those two winters, with minimal amount of snow on that roof, I could see that the footings that I originally installed had sank about an inch and I didn't like that either. 
So if I'm going to go this far, I might as well put in new footings. So I would end up removing every footing that I originally installed and reinstalled a footing three times larger with three times more concrete. As I've been watching and editing this video, there's part of me that just says this is pure madness to think that I managed to pull those footings out of there without damaging the existing slab. But I can tell you after this winter that we just went through, those footings were exactly what we needed. I get my, my angles right because if that's not right, I just got to make sure they're both right. Yeah. Gonna back up and look at it. I just got to figure out my angles so I can cut all the posts. All of these posts are 6x6 posts and I tried to get 6x10 posts but there was over a 6 month waiting list at this time. But as I watched the porch very carefully over this winter, all of these beams did fine. I had to remove some siding and install a flashing to get the ledger board up where I wanted it. This is where I made the mistake originally. Had I used a ledger board instead of securing the front porch where I did, maybe I only would have had to replace a beam and some footings. But after knowing what I know and going through a couple of winters, I feel much better about how the front porch came out.
Experience always seems to be the best teacher and after living in our home for a couple of years we realized that the corrugated tin that we liked so much again was going to lead to more problems. So I installed brand new tin on the house. This is what our home looks like at this exact moment. 